So what do you do with anxiety? You climb and maintain. It's turbulent, you go higher. You climb, you pray, you maintain, you worship. You pray and you worship. You climb and maintain. You pray and worship. You climb and maintain. You pray and worship. Listen to me. Turn to somebody right now and tell them you are not the sacrifice. I want to tell you something. Go home and get you some rest tonight because understanding that you are not the sacrifice, all you have to do is climb and maintain. All you have to do to get rid of the anxiety is to pray and to worship. I uh, am grateful to be here and thank you for that moment, um, Pastor Joel. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the in invitation to be here. It's, um, it's really, really powerful to stand here in front of so many people. Lakewood, you have been really kind to me all weekend. I am grateful for that. And Pastor Joel, pa Pastor Victoria, thank you for allowing me to come into your space because when you, have, when you invite somebody to come and speak to your folks, you gotta know what, who, what they're about and what's going on. So I'm, I'm grateful that you've given this, this opportunity. We talked about Medea earlier, and a lot of people know me as Medea, but there's something that a lot of people don't know that I want to share with you. About 30 years ago, when I was about 17, 18 years old, I went to seminary school. I was a minister in my church. I would pray, and I would, I would uh, encourage people, and I got up to do my first sermon. Didn't go over so well. <laughs> I got up there and started to, thought I was preaching, and the pastor comes behind me, he said, well, if God called you, he would qualify you, and I don't think he... <laughs> Will be qualified. Him. So, so I was very, very happy. I went home and prayed. I said, God, what is going on? He said, well, that's not where you're going to minister. You're not going to do that. That's, you won't be in the pulpit. And I said, oh, thank God. <laughs> because, you know, you look at people like Pastor Joel, if you step on his foot, he's going to pray for you. You step on mine, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> you mess around and hit this bunion, you're really going to be in trouble. But... <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm grateful for, for the opportunity of understanding what I was supposed to do. God and I when, I, when I prayed, God showed me my ministry would come through movies and television. And, and listen, just because I'm a Christian who makes movies, don't, don't think that all my movies are going to be Christian. Sometimes they'll be sci-fi, sometimes they'll be rated R. They'll be all over the place because I'm an artist. I want to tell all kinds of stories. But what is important to me is that as I'm telling stories, that there is a message of hope that people take with them. So, so if you guys can understand that and appreciate that with me, I, I'm grateful for it. We talk about this moment where... where I was trying to get the career off the ground, and all of a sudden, it started taking off. And I was in demand everywhere. We were selling out. We couldn't add any more seats to the theater. I was doing 350, 60, 70 shows a year. Just wouldn't stop. Just performance after performance after performance. And something was happening. You ever find yourself in a moment where everything is going great, and then all of a sudden, you get anxiety about something? I found myself having great anxiety about being able to fly. I was a very, very nervous flyer. You know, coming from a kid who had nothing, who had never been on a plane to 20-something years old, putting me on my first plane, and I didn't understand it. I was scared to death. I get on the plane with my oil. <laughs> I had a friend named Nita. She gave me oil, just oil. She would just pray over it. And oh, I had olive oil all over myself, just <laughs> anointing the door as I'm going in, anointing every seat. People coming behind me going, what is this all over the place? Get to my seat, we take off, flight attendant come on and say the stuff, they say I didn't hear none of it, I was just holding on, holding on, holding on. We take off, I'm white knuckled. You have not seen white knuckles until you see a black man with white knuckles holding on to something. <laughs> so there I was, in demand, but afraid to fly. Then the horror of 9-11 happened and I stopped flying altogether, I said I can't do it anymore. I started taking my bus everywhere. So I was on the bus and my promoters and the people in my business folk were like, Tyler, my agent, like, what do you mean? You're, you're coming to California on a bus? Yeah, how long does that take? I don't know, four days. <laughs> you know how much time you're wasting? You, you don't want to get on a plane and just come? No, 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 I can't do it, I can't do it. So finally, I was, one day I was running in the park, I said, God, I got to do something, I'm getting all this demand, and this is hindering the blessing that you're giving me. It's hindering me because I'm afraid to fly. So what I did was, I'm running in the park one day, and I'm exercising, and I see this little plane in the air, and it's, it's being tossed around, and I immediately start praying for the people on the plane. I say, Lord, have mercy, help them, Lord, all that turbulence, help them. Jesus, Shabbat, oh, she's Shabbat, Jesus. 
You know it's bad when you call Jesus and Shabba at the same time. <laughs> and then the plane gets lower and lower, and then all of a sudden it comes down and land, I realize it's a toy. <laughs> There's a man flying a remote control airplane in the park. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna go buy one of those. Maybe that's what I need to be all right. So I go and I go to the hobby shower and I said, okay, let me have one of these. I don't read the instructions, I don't do any of that. Just like a man, just take it home, take it out of the box, take off, boom, crash, two seconds. Did nothing to help me. Went back the next day, bought another one, boom, same thing. About the fourth or fifth time I went, the old guy that worked there, he said, son, you got more money than sense. I said, come here, sit on this simulator, let me show you how this works. And he started explaining to me how an airplane works, how the wings have lift and the airfoil, and how there's an aileron that goes right and left, and there's an elevator that goes up and down to make the plane go up and down. Then there's yawing and all this stuff. And as I was learning, I got fascinated. So I bought them and started flying, and I was like, yeah, I got it now, I got it. I'm gonna be able to fly. So I started flying again. Then I said, you know what, I'm gonna get my pilot's license. So one day I'm walking into an airport and I see this little plane. It uh, looks like a little Volkswagen with wings. It was called a Cirrus, and they were explaining to me what's great about the Cirrus is that if you get in trouble, there's a parachute. You pull a handle inside, a rocket shoots out in a parachute, and lets the whole plane come to the ground. I said, yep, that's the one I want. That's the one I'm gonna fly on right there. So I called the salesman, and we go up, and he takes me up, and I've never been in a plane this small. He took me up early in the morning. The air was smooth, wonderful, it was great. We're taking off, I was like, wow, this is really nice. He said, you wanna try the yoke? I'm like, sure, no white knuckles. I'm just taking the yoke, planes moving from left to right. I was like, okay, I'll buy it. Called him the next day, I said, you know what, let's go up again just so I'm, I'm sure and comfortable. He said, okay, well, I only have a slot in the afternoon. So we go up in noon. Now, if you know anything about flying, the middle of the day in the heat and the thermals is not very comfortable. So we take off and we're in the heat and thermals and the plane is bouncing around. I mean bouncing, a little plane and I am having a fit. I'm like, uh, we're gonna have to land. He's like, no, 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 just stay. I'm like, nope, nope, land, Shaba, I can't do it. Land, <laughs> land, land, I need my feet on land. He said, hold on just a minute. Air traffic control comes over in a headset and the lady says, 378 Gulf Lima, climb and maintain 6,500 feet. So he pushes the throttle, hit the elevator, up, the plane goes up, we go up. And we break through this layer where all of this turbulence was happening. Then all of a sudden, we got to a place where everything was smooth. All because somebody said, climb and maintain. Climb and maintain. Climb and maintain. With that in mind, I'd like to go to the scripture, if you don't mind. Those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to Vic Jody, the 21st <laughs> chapter and the 16th verse of Vic Jody. If you have it, say amen. Uh, Why y'all laughing? Oh, because you know there's no Vic Jody in the Bible? I'm glad, because that Saturday night crowd wasn't too sure. They were looking for it. They were looking for it. <laughs> Vic Jody, that's a cross between Victoria, Joel, and Mama Doty, and they were looking for it in the Bible. It was something. <laughs> But well, seriously, I'd like to go to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, Genesis 22nd chapter. And it reads as follows, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here am I. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled the donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the donkeys, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come to you again. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the, first, he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, he said, Father, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. 
And they came to the place which God told them of, and Abraham built an altar and laid the wood in the order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon thy lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place Jehovah Jireh as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Today I wanna talk to you about anxiety, anxiety. I look at this scripture and I, I see Isaac who is a young man at the time from theologians and historians say he's about 13 into, from 13 into his 20s. And he is walking up to a higher place with this father, his father, a man that he trusts, that he loves, that he respects. His father is leading him to a higher place. And as he's walking up, Isaac says, Abraham, daddy, father, I see the burnt offering, I, I, I see the wood, sorry, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the offering? Meaning, I see the knife, I see the wood, I see all the tools for a sacrifice, but where is the sacrifice itself? I see the knife, I see the wood, I see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? He's got anxiety about it, I can imagine. He's got anxiety, like what is going on here? We're going up to this place, and I see all these things that are about to take me out of here, or could take me out of here, or could take the offering for the animal out of here, but why are we in this moment? So I wanted to talk to you about anxiety, like those of you who are dealing with things, walking through situations in this life, you're married, things are going great, then all of a sudden something happens. Person wants a divorce. You thought you would live your life forever with this person and all of a sudden the very person that you thought would be there forever is about to leave and you see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire, but you're wondering, are you the sacrifice? You've got children that you're raising and everything seemed to be fine when they were younger, but now they're at a place where they're a little bit older and they're doing things that you couldn't even imagine and you're worried. They've got addictions, they've got things going on and you're wondering, God, what is going on? You see the knife. You see the wood, you see the fire, but where is the sacrifice? Those dreamers in here who are trying to build a dream, everything seems to be going fine and all of a sudden you hear something, there's a rumbling, something is happening that is trying to, to distract you. You see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire, you've got anxiety, you can't sleep. You're tossing and turning all night long, wondering what is going on. God, what is going on in this moment? What is going on? What is happening right now? I've been there. It's a very difficult place when you know that you've got anxiety all over you. So as I look at this text and I see Isaac wondering, is he the sacrifice? I came here to tell you some good news. If you are in this place and you are wondering if you are the sacrifice, I came to tell you that you are not. You are not the sacrifice. God did not bring you this far to leave you. You are not about to die. You are not about to lose everything. You are not the sacrifice. How do I know that? In the very next verse, Abraham answers Isaac. He says, God himself will provide the sacrifice. So here in this moment in the Old Testament, they are under the law, so they needed the blood of a lamb for the atonement of sin. Us today, we are under grace. So the blood of Jesus atones for our sins. So Jesus was already the sacrifice. So let me ask you something. Since God himself provided the sacrifice and was the sacrifice, why are you having so much anxiety nailing yourself to a cross that Jesus has already risen from? What do you do in this moment though? Now that you know you're not the sacrifice, what do you do? How do you get past it? How do you get past this anxiety? How do you rest? How do you have peace? How do you, what do you do? And that is in the scripture for me as I was reading, this is what made me think about it. Abraham 
tells his servants, stay here, and me and Isaac are going to go up and worship. He saw a mountain that God had led him to, so he was going to go up and worship. So they were going to climb. They were going to go up, and they were going to climb, and they were going to maintain. They were going to worship. Climb and maintain. The climbing is the prayer, and the worship is maintaining. So what do you do with anxiety? You climb and maintain. It's turbulent, you go higher. You climb, you pray, you maintain, you worship. You pray and you worship. You climb and maintain. You pray and worship. You climb and maintain. You pray and worship. Listen to me. Turn to somebody right now and tell them you are not the sacrifice. I want to tell you something. Go home and get you some rest tonight because understanding that you are not the sacrifice, all you have to do is climb and maintain. All you have to do to get rid of the anxiety is to pray and to worship. What, what prayer, simple prayer. Prayer is talking to God, just having a conversation with him. God, I need you. God, I need you to be with me right now. God, I need you to walk me through this thing. God, I need you to be by my side. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, stay with me. Let your blood be with me, O Lamb of God. Thank you right now. Lord, increase my territory. Let your hand of favor stay with me. Keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. You've got to pray, and that is the climb. And then the maintain is the worship. God, you're wonderful. How I love your name. How excellent are you, O Lamb of God. You have no rival. You have no equal. You are the only true and living God. God, thank you for everything you've ever done for me. God, I worship you only you can. You've got to climb and maintain, and you've got to read the Word. You've got to get into some of those Psalms where you really understand that God is on your side. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowl and from the noise and the pestilence. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Only with mine eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, which is the most high, my habitation. Therefore, no evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. They will bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I will tread on the lion, the adder, and the young lion, and the dragon shall I trample under my feet. You've got to get the word inside it. You've got to believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to climb and maintain. You've got to climb and maintain. If you don't remember anything else I said today, remember climb and maintain. If it's turbulent and there's trouble, go higher. Don't sit there. The devil is breathing down your neck. He's right where he's supposed to be. Because the Bible says you ought to say, get thee behind me, Satan. But if you want him to flee, just submit to God and resist him, and he's got to flee. I've never seen anybody in the presence of God worshiping and praising, and the devil was able to stay. If you want him to flee, you've got to pray, praise and worship. You've got to pray and worship. You've got to climb and maintain. You've got to get into the Word of God. And here's how I know that it's going to be all right. The first five words of this text simply says, and it came to pass, which means whatever you're going through did not come to stay. You're going to be all right. Abraham told his servants, stay here. This is the thing that blew my mind. Stay here. And we're going to go up and worship. But there's a little part of the verse where he says, and we will return to you. Well, Abraham, if you're going up to sacrifice your son, how do you know you're coming back with your son? When you have that kind of trust and that kind of faith in God, I don't care what it looks like, it's going to be all right. And Abraham turned and he named the place Jehovah Jireh, meaning God will provide. So the very thing you're worried about, don't worry about it because God will provide. But Tyler, you don't understand. It's been difficult. It's been hard. God will provide. But Tyler, you don't understand. I love my wife and my husband. This has been really difficult, but you don't understand. God will provide. Just climb and maintain. Just pray and worship. Just climb and maintain. 
And if I can leave you with anything, I want to leave you with this. Hear me clearly when I say this. There are people who come in your life sometimes to be there for a season. They weren't meant to be there always. Sometimes we find ourselves hooked up with people that we think are there for a lifetime, but they were only supposed to be there for a season. There are people who come in your life like boosters for a rocket. If you ever watch a rocket go into space, the boosters fall off when it reaches a certain altitude. Some people are not equipped to handle the altitudes that you're going to. So don't be afraid when they fall off. They're not bad people. They just couldn't go where you're going. God bless you, Lakewood. Climb and maintain. Climb and maintain. Climb and maintain. Thank you so much. God bless you. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.